And I'm uh, with Defend Public Education now, United Public Workers for Action. We're having a uh, press conference here to talk about the need to defend the murals uh, here that are threatened with destruction. These murals came about as a result of a mass working class movement, the general strike in San Francisco in 1934. And Victor Arnatov, the painter of these murals, actually was supporting the general strike in San Francisco. He actually did graphics for the general strike in San Francisco. So the question is, why today would we destroy the murals of Victor Arnatov? That's the question that we have to ask. And our view uh, is that Victor Arnatov's murals uh, are a sort of uh, contributions to working people in San Francisco. And the fact that there's been no education, there's been no uh, classes on these murals is a sign of the uh, problems of public education. Why haven't there been classes on the history of these art murals? Why are the students, why is there no signage? Now the uh, superintendent of uh, San Francisco Unified School District, Matthews, has said that he was shocked by these murals. This is the superintendent of San Francisco Unified School District was shocked by the murals. If he was shocked by the murals, first of all, did, did that mean he didn't understand what they were? Because <laughs> art historians know what they are, and they had a committee that they formed which did not include any art, art historians on what should be done about the murals. Why would you set up a committee to look at these murals and decide what to do and not have an art historian uh, as part of the committee. They refused to do that. In my view, it's because they had made a predetermined decision that they were going to destroy the murals. That's why they didn't have an art historian. Now, we've also discovered that uh, uh, Stephen Cook, who is the uh, president of the board, uh, or chair of the president of the, of the San Francisco Board of Unified School District, has also got business interests here in San Francisco. He's, a, he's the head of a nonprofit called Mission Fit in San Francisco. And they're actually, this Mission Fit is actually uh, getting, having a contract with the city and county of San Francisco. And today, Danny Glover has spoken out in favor of the murals. They have argued that the people who want to destroy them, that the black students uh, really wanted the murals destroyed. Well, the black students did not want the murals destroyed. They made an agreement with uh, Dewey Crumpler to do uh, response murals, which he did. And both Dewey Crumpler and uh, the uh, Danny Glover understand that these murals are a contribution the students don't want it. I remember exactly what I felt when I looked at that mural. I, I understood something, I saw something, and I had questions in my mind about it, in, in that sense. I mean, the first thing that it did, it allowed me to question, to ask the questions. But I came up at a time when there was people asking the questions in Mississippi, Alabama, all over the country. Young people my age, who my age, or who were older than me, who were down there. I came up at that particular point in time. And to, ha to, ha to have that mural as, 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 as a symbol of this country's history. It is a mural that it covers that moment and several other moments. You cover all the moments in that mural because, or the one that they're offended by, or they're offended by the the the, uh, the, the, the gold rushers who were depicted in the mural. They're offended by that? Well, do they know that there were 2,000 slaves in those gold mines in, 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 in 1849? Do they know that? You know, even though, even though the United, uh, even though California in this its state constitution had had uh, abolished slavery, it, it's, it, it had been a state that abolished slavery. So on the one hand, is what we know is that you know, do you know who we are in this? Country? Do you know what we represent to this country? You know, yeah, the, the population of San Francisco may have changed. Yeah, but if you try to take a mirror mirror down like this in Harlem, you get an uproar, maybe. You understand? But you're in San Francisco? I mean, you, I mean, I mean, you, you understand? It's San Francisco, you understand? Our first speaker is going to be Lope, and he's with the Alumni Committee, and he's going to talk about these issues. So I want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, we are, we are solid in our feelings on protecting the murals. We, uh, we feel that the best way to do it, the best way to do it, the best response is to leave the murals alone, uh, preserve them the way Arnatov had imagined, and um, that every every decade could appreciate these murals. Um, no one questions the content of the murals; they just don't like what it says. It's ironic they want to destroy murals, 
that shows America dark history. That's what Arnadoff did. He brought light into America's dark history. If he was trying to glorify Washington, he wouldn't be showing slaves at Mount Vernon. He wouldn't be showing grayless Western expansion people uh, as opposed to the rest of the characters in the other mural where they were all colorful. You wouldn't be showing tree branches broken over a, chief, uh, head, a chief's headdress, inferring that um, the manifest destiny was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, breaking treaties and injuring people or mistreating people. I just find this sad because the other thing they want to do is to create new curriculum which would be to illustrate that Washington and the other 12 presidents who were slave owners had, had done all these things at Mount Vernon or the Western Expansion mistreatment of people. So I, I, it will be interesting to watch what they do tonight and I'll just be calm and polite and see what they do. One of the uh, issues about the uh, process and we're challenging the process that these murals uh, were discussed was it basically was a committee, a rig committee that was put together. And uh, as I said earlier, there wasn't an art historian, there wasn't a professional muralist to talk about the history of the murals. And the other thing that happened is that the issue of racism, because whites on the committee were called uh, whitey, whitey. Now, this is a serious issue. You have a committee to look at the history of the murals, and people who are opposed to their destruction are called whitey. What place does this have? in a discussion about the murals and the history of the murals. That's basically racism is what it is. And we can't really put up with that uh, because actually Victor Onatoff was an anti-racist. Victor Onatoff was actually had murals about blacks and Af African Americans and white workers together. Victor Onatoff was supporting a fight against racism right here in San Francisco in the 1930s and in 1936 when he spoke. So we can say that in fact Victor Onatoff struggled by destroying those murals, you're destroying and covering up the history of San Francisco. And that's why there's been an outpouring of many people, thousands of people, uh, leading artists around the world who've said, no, we cannot censor, we cannot destroy the art. And if you can't learn from history, if you can't learn from the art, uh, you have a problem understanding your future. And uh, Tamaka, a, a senior, has said, uh, if children are being traumatized by it, what Sitting Bull would have done is to bring those kids to him and said, you've got to learn from that history. You have to face it and frontally, not hide it, not censor it. Um, and that's what we're saying. You've got to face the reality. You have to learn from it. And we find it shocking, frankly, that young people in San Francisco don't even know what those murals are who have gone through the San Francisco Unified School District. That is shocking because that's the responsibility of the school board and it's the responsibility of, of the superintendent to educate the students of San Francisco. Our proposal at the last meeting was that there be a uh, American Indi Indian Center, Native American Center here, um, with a history center that had classes on the murals, and a requirement of all students in the city and county of the San Francisco Unified School District to go through a class at M George Washington High before they graduate to learn about those murals and the history. This is a history project. This is an art project. This is a culture project for education in San Francisco. So our next speaker. It's Marianne Ring. I just want to read something that I, Steve sent me from a teacher, an activist teacher who is in support of saving the murals. Okay, her name is her name is Summer Schultz. Yes, this was protest art. It is not glorifying colonialization and slavery. It is all about making people look at it. It's meant to counter the cleaned up hero worship mythology that shrouds George Washington. Students need to see it and need to understand it. Change the school name, that's not my idea, but keep the mural and use it to teach. Saying this painting supports slavery and human bondage is like saying Picasso's Guernica glorifies war. I'm against all censorship. This, this place here should be educating the children on the history. You can't change history. You can whitewash it, but it doesn't make it go away. This is what happened. They need to learn from it, so they make sure it doesn't happen in the future. But if you're going to cover it up and hide it, what else are you going to hide? You're going to hide the fact that the Taliban destroyed the um, Buddhist statues or that ISIS destroyed the art in Palmyra. 
you can't do that. The world ignored when all that art was destroying. Hitler had his movement in World War II, the G degenerative art movement, where he took all the Jewish art, brought it together, and then destroyed it. And then he started to burn the books. What I want to know is what is their real alternative motive? They start with the murals, and what do they want to do next? That's what I, I'm wondering. One of the issues that we are also addressing here is what happened at a meet on the, uh, July the 9th on these murals. And at that meeting, some of the people who were, have supported the destruction of the murals actually uh, disrupted that meeting. And she also said that this was genocide. She accused the people at the meeting of being in favor of genocide. Uh, because they were opposed to removing this mural. And then screaming and yelling and disrupting a meeting where Ro Professor Robert Cherney, who's an expert uh, on, on Victor Anatoff, is trying to speak. Uh, I mean, we're not interested in disrupting meetings. We're not interested in, in pre preventing people from speaking. We're saying everyone should have free speech. But I think it shows a certain characteristic that if you can't win uh, the argument uh, by logic and by you know, you're arguing your positions, then just disrupt the meeting. And I think what happened, of course, is we videotaped that. It went viral. It was in the New York Times. It was in the San Francisco Chronicle. And we say that what we're asking today is that the Board of Education vote to withdraw the decision uh, that they had to uh, destroy the murals and to start uh, to rethink that. Uh, and that there be a, a, a really a, a healthy process for examining the, uh, the murals and what happened in the murals. The murals are a historic part of labor, They're the working class history in San Francisco, and uh, it's actually a great wealth for the students of San Francisco. The, the students at Washington High who went there, they have a wonderful art resource, which they should have in every school. So the other thing we're calling for is an International Day of Murals uh, at George Washington High once a year where they can have lessons and classes on these murals, and they can bring murals from all over the Bay Area, all over the country there, and put them out and say, this is our history, this is our art. Let the murals flow, and let the young people do murals. And if the young people are traumatized about this, uh, this mural, do murals how they feel. That's how you express and educate young people. Have them, in an artistic way, show what their stories are. That's, that's what was, will be a healthy situation for the murals. So our next uh, speaker is going to be uh, Dr. Gray Brecken. He's, uh, he has actually uh, been studying these murals. He's an art historian. He has a lot to say about the history of these murals. So welcome, Gray Brecken. Well, I'm glad that you're all here. Um, it's been, uh, this has all been very painful. Um, I was at the last of the four um, Reflection in Action um, committee meetings where it became very quickly clear that the, f the fix was in, um, that the decision had been made, the verdict had been delivered before the trial was even held. Um, and um, that was really painful. It was very disturbing to see the railroading and the degree of racism that was in that room in the name of combating racism. It, the room was just full of it. Um, and so I've been involved in this, but it, uh, um, it, as I say, it has been very disturbing because I love these works of art. And um, th I'm the project scholar for the Living New Deal over at the Geography Department at UC Berkeley, and our charge is to identify New Deal public works, which include a great deal of the, the artworks that they did at that time. And Arnatov's murals, like those of his friend and fellow Russian, um, Anton Refregi, who painted the murals at the Rincon Annex Post Office, which also got him in trouble in 1953, um, they belong to a part of New Deal art called social realism. And what that was, was it was a critical artwork, which was made possible because the government was the art patron during the 1930s, unlike normally, if you can call it normal, when the wealthy and museums and corporations are the patrons. And when they are the patrons, there is a limit on what any artist can say because they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. But because the government was the patron and there were some very enlightened people in Washington, D.C., um, who gave the artists a long leash, and they certainly did with Victor Arnatoff. I've never understood how he got away with painting what he did at um, George Washington High School, showing what he did about the founder of our country, which nobody else was doing at that time. So um, 
yes, what they did was they, they were critical, as Ref Regier was critical at the Rincon Annex Post Office. And, um, and one can see that. But it takes visual literacy, and that's what the school board members do not have. They are visually illiterate. They're only seeing the surface of what is there. They can't go any deeper than that. And great art, like great literature, great music, requires work. It requires education. And they don't seem to be capable of that. Um, they don't want to do that because they have closed their ears. I think one of the most re remarkable things is that this controversy came up in the late 60s, and the Black Panthers had the African-American artist, very young artist at that time, Dewey Crumpler, paint the response murals, which are around the corner from the um, Arnitoff murals. And I don't think that these school board members bothered to go around the corner and see that there actually are what they are claiming that they want to have, which is murals which show the aspirations and the triumphs of people of color. I don't think they've done that. Even more shocking is they have not called upon Dewey Crumpler um, for advice in this controversy. And when Lope Yap asked if he could show a two and a half minute a video of Crumpler defending the murals, they would not allow him to show it. So this is an example of how they are, in fact, closing their ears and eyes to what they really should be paying attention to um, in this uh, controversy. Thank you. And one of the uh, interesting and important points is that many of the students at Washington High are for protection of the murals. And one of them, uh, Nick, is here, and he has some thoughts about these murals and the history of these murals. Welcome, Nick. Yes, I'm a, a, a uh, George Washington High School alumnus. I was there uh, from 72 to 74 while Dewey Crumpler was painting the uh, three response murals. So I was fortunate enough to go back and forth to school every day and, and watch Dewey Crumpler paint them. I got a great uh, historical and political education from both the Arnitoff murals and the Dewey Crumpler, Crumpler response murals. And I, I really am shocked indeed that, that, no one, that this group has not focused on, that the, the anti-mural people have not focused on the Crumpler uh, murals because they do show heroic figures um, um, in the, the Native American and indigenous people uh, murals, in the Asian American murals, in the African American murals and they, they show the overcoming of bonds and the breaking of bonds. Uh, they're very inspirational. Um, so they, there's a great deal of history there um, that has just been ignored, and it's right in the room adjacent to the Arnatoff murals. And if not for the Arnatoff murals, those response murals would not even be there. So we owe a great deal to the conversation generated by the Arnatoff murals due to the controversy generated by them. Um, I, uh, I had some points that Steve brought up. I am I'm in favor of um, mural education at George Washington High School. I think students should be doing their own response murals. The Buon Fresco technique, you can do individual size Buon Fresco murals. Uh, students can do their own response murals. If for some reason um, a, a young adult um, has feels the need to respond to one of the mural, they could do their own Buon Fresco mural. You could put them on e easels and display them, you know. This would empower the youth. Covering something up and whitewashing history and whitewashing something does not empower our youth, you know. And what we should be doing is empowering our young adults, you know. Uh, not taking away something that bothers them or they feel is harming them or irritates them, but giving them the tools to respond to it and respond to them and grow in strength. This is what we need to do as as leaders, as strong people, as warriors, as strong people who have paved ways for them. Make them strong, you know, not make them feel weak or encourage weakness. One of the things that the school board has said, uh, and the superintendent, uh, uh, Vincent Matthews, is that they are uh, in support of the African American Latino students and the teachers. Um, but there's a program called PEER, Peer Assisted Review, PAR. And this program has been used to retaliate against senior teachers, has been used to retaliate against African American and Latino teachers. And uh, I actually asked Mark Sanchez, the vice chair of the board, uh, why is this program PAR being used to, to, to discipline teachers? Because it was set up to help teachers, not discipline teachers. And he told me that his lawyers 
had said it was okay. It was okay to use this program to discipline teachers. Now, the unit, this has been spent, they're spending, this district is spending over a million dollars a year on a parcel tax for the PAR program. And it's been documented that this PAR program is a targeting senior teachers who are near retirement and African American Latino teachers. So we're saying this program is to be shut down, PAR. We're also saying that uh, Margaret Reyes, who's going to be speaking here tonight, who's a teacher who's been terminated, they refused to give her a proper hearing, a uh, Skelly hearing, she should be put back immediately on the job. In California, there's a shortage of teachers. And the reason there's a shortage of teachers are teachers are being driven out of the profession. Why? It's incentivized to bring in young teachers. They want young teachers who they don't have to pay decent wages to, and these young teachers can't survive in San Francisco. These young teachers can't survive in Contra Costa and other counties. So why is the district targeting senior teachers? This is an issue that we want to raise here at this meeting as well as the protection of the murals. If the students, and they admit it, the students here and the people who are protesting to destroy the mural did not even know what the mural was. They, this committee, which was set up by the superintendent, Matthews, and the school board, this committee actually said that this was a racist mural. This mural supported genocide. Now, if this is the committee that they set up to investigate this mural, this is, this is the formal committee set up by the superintendent, and the committee says that the mural is racist and supports genocide, then there's a serious miseducation of even the board of uh, uh, the uh, school board and the superintendent, because they themselves don't even know what the murals are. And I ask, in San Francisco today, why would a board of education, why would a superintendent not even know what these murals are, what the history of these murals are? That's a very strange and, and questionable thing for us. We are calling, as I said, for more education. We're calling for a uh, Native American Cultural History Center on the campus of Washington High that has regular classes and educates it. We're also saying if the superintendent, uh, Vincent Matthews, was shocked, and that's what he said in the board meeting, he was shocked about uh, these murals. This is a year before they had a motion to take them down. Why didn't he put signage up? Why didn't he explain what the murals were? If you're shocked about these murals, why don't you even explain what they are? This is a real question, because there should be signage. Now, my feeling is the reason there's not signage of these murals in 1936 is if, if uh, Victor Onatoff had actually put signage up about these murals, saying that they were challenging the uh, stereotype history of uh, George Washington, uh, that he chopped down a cherry tree and he was an honest guy, but that George Washington had actually supported slavery, George Washington actually supported uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, pioneers taking over Native American land. They would have certainly, the right wing Nixon and the right wingers who wanted that mural gone, would have said, here's proof positive. We've got to get rid of these murals. So that's the reason that there isn't signage up now. However, today, there's no reason why there shouldn't be signage up. And people have proposed signage and digitalization of the murals to educate people. And that's what we're saying. We need more education. We need money for more teachers. We don't need money to destroy murals, which are historic and a contribution to our well, a whole country, I mean, these are, and the New York Times even, art critics around the world have said these are terrific murals, these are murals that should be protected. Why is this school board voting to destroy the murals? That's what you have to ask. And we say because this school board is not representing the interests of the students, the teachers, and the public of San Francisco, and it will not hold. They will not be able to destroy these murals. I can guarantee that because the people of San Francisco are fed up with a school board that would say, let's destroy murals instead of educating people about the history of these murals.